All right, FAQ number eight. Is the pre-tribulation rapture biblical? Uh, well, I'm going to have to admit to a fault here openly and publicly before God and men. And that is, I have been helping to perpetuate a false system. And you say, oh, you mean the rapture? No, no, not the rapture. Um, the enemies of the biblical teaching of a pre-tribulation rapture, <laughs> um, they have come out with that term uh, specifically so that they can control the argument. Okay, they came out with a false term that ha does not appear in the Bible specifically so that they can then prove prove that there is no pre-trib rapture. Okay, and I've been perpetuating that term. It's, a, it's part of our English language. But I really think that we need to start changing back to what the Bible actually says. And you see the Bible actually says in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, it is the time of Jacob's trouble. End of story. There's no argument at that point. Because this coming time is clearly spelled out who it's for. Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel. It's the time of Israel's tr trouble, not the time of the church's trouble. So the debate's over right there. You can clearly see the church is not going to be going into the time of Israel's trouble. Okay? Simple. We get taken out beforehand. So even the title of the correct biblical title of that coming time period shows you the truth of there being a catching away of believers before the time of Jacob's trouble. But what they'll do here is they say, these people, they define this, this term, and we've been using it for so long. And like I said, I've been guilty. I've been using the term simply because it's just part of our language, but we need to change it. We need to say, I believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away of the, of the bride of Christ, or, or rapture. It's okay to say rapture. It's a description of what's going to happen. And it will be a rapturous event. It will be very happy. It'll be great to get out of here. But we need to change it to pre-time of Jacob's trouble, rapture. You know, the pre-touched, <laughs> T-O-J-T, pre-touched. I'm, I'm pre-touched and watch the confusion fall over the faces of the post-trib heretics. But let's look at the word tribulation in the Bible. Let's look up all the references. There's only 22 verses that have the word tribulation. And we're going to see if this term tribulation is ever used as a title. I can tell you right now it's not. It's only a description. Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice. So when thou art in tribulation, it does not say in the tribulation. Tribulation is a description. The next one will be in Judges 10, verse 14. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Your trouble. Tribulation is another way of saying trouble. Your tribulation. Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 24. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by, the, by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Again, it's not a title. It's a description. Now we get into the collection of books, the New Testament here. Matthew chapter 13, verse 21. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. So again, it's describing trouble. Matthew 24, verse 21. The inf infamous Matthew chapter 24. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Great Tribulation. It does not say, then shall be the Great Tribulation. It's not a title. It's a description. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And it goes on to say, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man coming in, in you know, heaven. And it's interesting because I like to ask these post-trib nuts you know, I like to ask them this thing. They, they say, well, see, that right there is the coming of Jesus. Okay. So when Paul says in a moment, the twinkling of an eye, you know, um, are you meaning to tell me that that's the same event? I mean, don't you think we're going to get a clue that Jesus, I mean, if this, if this is where the rapture happens, uh, don't you think we get a little bit of a clue that Jesus is coming when, um, 
you know, the, uh, uh, what's it say there? The sun is darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars fall from heaven. It's not a mysterious coming. Give me a break, people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Okay? It's not this event. And again, we see this thing of tribulation. It's not a title. It is an explanation. It is a description of what that time period is going to be like. Next one is Mark chapter 13, verse 24. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. That tribulation. It does not say the tribulation. Again, let's define the terms by the King James Bible. I don't know what the new versions say. I mean, they could say... They probably do say the tribulation. I have no idea because this whole thing of this post-trib stuff, it's all Catholic when you actually study it. They're the ones that teach that the church has to go through a final time of purification. Catholic doctrine is that you have to die in a state of grace. Just like what happens in the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. See? It's Catholic. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 33 is the next time that tribulation appears. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay? Not talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Acts 14, verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Were they in the time of Jacob's trouble? No. So they went through the Great Tribulation. Well, so does every Christian. Okay? Every Christian goes through Great Tribulation in their life. Sure, absolutely. But we're not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. So see, these post-trib Catholic liars come out and they say, do you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture? See, they falsely define the term so that you say, no, I don't know, you know I, or I do believe in a pre-tribulation. Oh, so then you're saying we get out before tribulation comes in your life. Well, I can clearly show from Scripture that we have tribulation. You see how these devils work? That's disgusting. We need to redefine things according to Scripture. Romans chapter 2, verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Again, description of what you go through in life, not of the coming seven-year time of Jacob's trouble. Romans 5, verse 3, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That's for anybody in any time. Not a seven-year time period known as the time of Jacob's trouble. Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? You know, it's kind of interesting, because one of my pre-trib rapture moments using the term again, you know, one of my pre-trib rapture moments, uh, I actually talk about that verse, and it's like you look at the verse there in Romans chapter 8, and it's like those things will separate you from the love of Christ if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble. But again, this thing of tribulation, you know, it's not a title for this coming time period. Again, you see that. Because you know, it's lumped in there, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. It's just, it's another word for trouble. The troubles that you will face as a Christian. Or anybody else that's saved in any other dispensation. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. They weren't going through the time of Jacob's trouble back then. So this word tribulation is a reference to what all people go through that are saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, Who comforteth, comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Again, not a title for the time of Jacob's trouble. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 4, Great is my boldness of speech toward you, great is my speech, or great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. Description of the normal troubles that come on somebody. Um, 1 Thessalonians 3, 4. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass, and ye know. They didn't go through the time of Jacob's trouble back then, but they did go through tribulation. Again, it's not a, a uh, 
title, it's a description. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Okay, so they get trouble too, the lost world. Revelation 1, 9, I, John, who, am, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He had tribulation back then, meaning trouble. But he was not going through the time of Jacob's trouble, and that's you know as he was writing there. He is called up to heaven at the rapture, and then he gets to see it. God fast forwards him in time. He goes up in Revelation chapter 4, and he sees the time of Jacob's trouble. But he does not call it the Great Tribulation. Let's continue. I'll prove that. Revelation 2.9 I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Like Stephen Anderson or any other Roman Catholic that claims to be Jewish. Just had to put that in there. Revelation 2.10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Again, it's not a title for that time, because the time of Jacob's love, trouble lasts a lot longer than ten days. Revelation 2, verse 22. Two more places to go here and with the word tribulation. Behold, behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Description, not a title. And finally, Revelation 7, verse 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, a title. It's not, a, excuse me, it's a description, not a title. Okay. That's what the Bible teaches. So, yes, we do need to redefine, and I apologize for per helping to perpetuate this false system of pre-tribulation rapture. It's a pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away would be the real way to say it according to Scripture. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble rapture or cap catching away if you want to go with the full scriptural thing there. You know, that's the real title. So, Pre-tribulation rapture, yes, that term is not in the Bible. Pre-catching away, uh, before the time, or uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away, that's a biblical one. So that's going to be it. We'll see you in the next FAQ.